So should you be buying Berkshire Hathaway shares now? Hello everyone, welcome back to Fiscal Voyage. Uh, my name is Felix. So we're gonna do an analysis on Berkshire Hathaway. This video was suggested by Simon. Uh, he uh, commented in a few other videos that he wanted me to do uh, this uh, stock analysis of uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So this is why I'm doing it. Thanks Simon, he's a good supporter of uh, my channel. Before we get started with the stock analysis on Berkshire Hathaway, uh, make sure to check out my free ebook, which is in the description below. Before we get started with the Berkshire Hathaway uh, stock analysis or stock review, um, I want to first point out that the company has two ticker symbols. The first one is BRK.A, and the next one is BRK.B. Uh, the difference is the price here. As you can see here, the B is at $217.76 and the A as at, is at $326,915. Um, so that's the difference. And because the difference, the main difference between the two is the price as well as the voting um, elig eligibility, the voting rights uh, into Berkeley shares. So, um, if you want high percentage of, of voting rights, this gets a very short percentage of votes or voting rights of the company. That's really the main difference between the uh, .B and the .A is the price as well as the uh, voting rights. But for most investors, you know, you like most investors uh, like us, you don't care about necessarily voting unless you're this big shot with, you know, millions and millions and billions of dollars, then you may want to have the right to vote you know, in the direction of the company. Uh, but most investors, you know, are the normal investors like you and me, uh, will stick with the dot B if we wanted to purchase shares of Berkshire Hathaway. All right, Berkshire Hathaway Inc. Class B, ticker symbol BRK.B. So let's look at the fundamentals for this uh, company. It's the same fundamentals for both the A and B, but obviously we're gonna go over the B here. Uh, but again, it's the same fundamental uh, revenue and, and then income and all that stuff. But let's continue. So fundamental for revenue grew at compound rate 10.2% from 2010 to 2019. So that's a real good rate. Uh, net income, however, had almost double, uh, more than double that growth rate at 22.7%. So that's outstanding for a 10-year period uh, growth rate. That's really good. Uh, and that's because uh, net margin uh, has been increasing. Uh, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, company has a credit rating of double A, which is investment grade, and a earnings per share growth of 9% in this 10-year period. And uh, the past five-year revenue actually has averaged slightly higher than the 10-year at 11.6%, so that's real good. So they're growing revenue even better than the 10-year average. And net income, and this is a, a big one here, it has increased 35% in the past five years, so that's tremendous. That's real great uh, net income growth. That that net income growth drives earning growth as well. Uh, the past five year average, however, is slightly lower at 8.6% versus a 9% for the 10 years. But overall, um, revenue and net income and earnings growth is real good. That's solid. I like it a lot. Uh, so let's continue with the fundamentals. For um, 2019, the company had adjusted earnings of $9.78. Uh, net margin came in at 24 0.9%. Uh, this is much higher than what the margin came in for 2018. Not sh it came in at 1.8% for 2018. I'm not sure what exactly um, happened there. You have to look at the annual report for 2018 um, to see why uh, net margin came in at 1.8, but that's what it came in as for uh, 2018. Uh, the company has a return on equity at 9.7%. Average, this is the average for the past five years. I think the return on equity for 2019 was about 20%, but for the past five year average, it averaged around 9.5, uh, 9.7%. The company does not pay a dividend because Warren Buffett believes that um, instead of returning money to shareholders, he likes to hold it and then uh, buy high quality company. He feels that that's the best way, uh, that's for the best interest of the shareholders because he feels that you know he could make more money, therefore increase the value or the price for the uh, broker share, uh, you know ticker symbol in the stock, therefore increasing the value for each shareholder. So that's why he doesn't pay a dividend. Um, so 
you know, I don't have a charter rule or five-year dividend yield average or most recent dividend increase or the payout ratio here. But overall, the fundamental looks great. Uh, revenue and net income growing very nicely. So let's look at the balance sheet for uh, Broker Share. Uh, currently, it has a debt to cap of 17% and a current ratio of two. So the debt to cap is very low. That's real good uh, percentage uh, based on the, the capitalization. Uh, current ratio at two is real good as well. You like to see it at 1.5 or higher. The higher it is, the better. So a two is a nice uh, ratio there. Debt to equity ratio, very low at 0.27. So, you know, I'm sure you guys know, you know, Buffett's not real big on debt. Um, but they do have debt, but it's very, very low, 0.27 um, ratio. So that's real good. I like that ratio. Uh, so the balance sheet is very strong. Interest coverage at 8.41. Again, they're able to pay out uh, their interest at the very minimum. And uh, so that looks good. Interest coverage, you like to see that uh, 2.5 or higher. Uh, and we have an 8.41 there. And price to book here is low, actually, at 1.32 versus the five-year average at 1.35. So it might be indicated that the company may be uh, fairly valued to slightly undervalued here just by on the price to book ratio over the past five-year average. All right, the future outlook. 2020 analysts are expecting earnings of uh, $9.25. This is, however, lower than the 2019s, as we saw earlier, of $9.78. So 2020 expected earnings is lower than 2019. Um, the good news is analysts was expecting about $9.13 uh, three months ago. Um, so they've upped it up to $9.25, so that's positive there. And 2021, here's the bright side, earnings are expected to be $10.90. So much higher uh, than the $9.78 in 2019, so almost a dollar uh, increase. And of course, it's because you know Buffett has been buying a lot of uh, shares of companies and selling some, so uh, that's that's positive there. That's real good. Um, CFRA and other uh, analysts are expecting around 6% earnings growth for the next three years. Um, using my dividend drill return model, even though the company doesn't pay out dividend, I still did the dividend re drill return model. I uh, just put a you know zero for dividends, and I came out with uh, about eight percent uh, total annual rate of return, which seems about right based on today's price. I uh, will look at that uh, you know as you saw in the fast graph, but we'll see that shortly in the fair value um, section or slide. Uh, Ford PE at twenty three point five, it is slightly higher than the current PE of twenty three, and again that's because twenty twenty expected earnings is at nine dollars and twenty five cents. So, but it's slightly higher than the five-year average of 22.7. So, you know, it's not a huge difference, but it is higher than the five-year average. So it might be indicated that maybe overvalued to slightly uh, fairly valued or, or slightly overvalued there versus the price of the book, which was uh, fairly valued to slightly undervalued. This is why, you know, different matrix. It's good to look at all kinds of metrics here. So you could see and determine, you know, is it fairly overvalued, undervalued, and such. So here's the fast graph for Berkshire Hathaway. As you can see, the company has some erratic earnings. Uh, there's been a period where it has low earnings growth as well as negative earnings growth here at 20, 2009 at 25%, 2011 at negative 8%, and 2012 at negative 26%. But then it picked right up in 2013. And you can see here was a 100% uh, increase in earnings. Uh, but does, it does have years where it's down and uh, negative and such. Um, as you can see here for 2020, earnings expected to be down by 5% to $9.25, but pick up right up to 18% for 2020. So that's very positive. And also think something to look at also is that the company tends to follow the normal multiple of about 21 versus the earnings PE of uh, 15. So Anything really under 21 should be an indicator that the company is undervalued. So let's uh, shorten this time period here to get a more uh, accurate estimate. And you can see here the company is slightly over the blue line. It has a PE of 23. Uh, so even though with a PE of 23, you still have a potential annual rate of return of about 8.5%. You know, this is close to my uh, data discount model analysis, about 8%. Um, as well as the other analysts, which was projecting around 6% growth. So 
you're not going to, at this price, you're not going to have high growth or annual return. You're going to have a modest, nice, uh, high single digit rate of return uh, based on today's price. But it's not, it's not that screaming buy that I like to look for. It's a nice uh, buy. We'll go over that uh, in my fair value uh, estimates. And, uh, and I go more into that uh, later in this video. But you can see here, it's, it is above the blue line of the normal multiple of 22. So that might be an indicator that it may be overvalued. And let's look at the analyst scorecard because I like to make sure that the analysts are pretty accurate, accurate with this company. So you can see here, um, they tend to miss 45% of the time or hit about 36% of the time. And Berkshire Hathaway beats it by 18% of the time. So it's more or less, um, it's slightly on the positive side with the hit and beat. Um, but I'm not 100% confident with these earnings. Um, the two years does look a little better with an 80% hit. Um, so they're probably more accurate with the... Um, uh, 2021 2022 more or less but the good thing is it is on the uptrend how much higher than the 2019 uh, actual earnings so that's very positive so i'm pretty um confident that the company will return about eight to nine percent annually for the next two to three years so let's look at the uh, fair price for the company from different analysts uh, cfra has a fair price of two two hundred and twenty dollars Morningstar 228. Fast Graph, as you saw, $249. Uh, this is based on 2020 expected earnings. And Yahoo at $226.50. I can use the dividend drill uh, model, discount model, because they don't pay a dividend, they haven't been growing it, or you know, because they don't pay it out. But uh, averaging out to four, we get a fair price of $230.88. Currently, the company goes for $217.77, meaning that the company is undervalued to fairly valued by uh, 6% to its fair price based on these estimates. Um, and I kind of agree with uh, the price range based on what I've uh, researched so far. Um, but either case, I think the company is a buy at current prices. So there you have it. I think the company is a nice, decent buy. I don't think it's a screaming buy. I'm not, you know, backing up the truck or buying, you know, a hundreds worth of shares. Um, I do think you will make money at current prices. Um, it's not a screaming buy, like I said, but it's something um, if you were interested in investing in broker share, I wouldn't, like if I were interested, I wouldn't mind buying a few shares now. The revenue growth, the net income growth is amazing. Earnings is continuing to grow as you saw. Uh, 2021 is expected to be higher, and 2022 it is going to be down this year, but that's okay with uh, all the things that's going on, uh, which is uh, okay. But um, earnings is going to be up and continue to grow around six or seven percent rate. So, therefore, um, I see the company total annual return for the next two to three years about that, you know, eight percent, nine percent, like we saw in the fast graph. So again, when I say a buy, it doesn't mean, you know, go out and buy shares. Make sure you do your own research. This is a real good company, but it's fairly valued, slightly undervalued. Uh, you won't get high return currently uh, for uh, Burger Share Hathaway, but I think it's a good price. Um, it's something that if you were interested in buying shares, uh, it wouldn't be bad to be buying a few shares now, a very small percentage of a portfolio at current prices, unless it drops you know, 15, 20%, then it will be a screaming buy. And I think a real, real good price will be with a P under 18. If you could find a time where Berkshire Hathaway had a P of under 18, it will be definitely a, a big screaming buy. So thank you for watching. Thanks, Simon, again, um, for suggesting this uh, analyst. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And don't forget to check out my free ebook in the description below.